All right, so it's already July here, but I finally finished up the horizontal stabilizer. So you can probably see it on the wall behind me there. Finished it a couple of weeks ago, and I've got a lot of raw footage to put together and get out there on that. But I thought I'd do something a little different first. You may have noticed the word wing in the title of this video. And the only reason I have anything wing to talk about is because it turns out I got my wing kit in uh, way back at the end of March. So uh, if it's any consolation to folks that are uh, anxiously awaiting their back-ordered kits from Vans, I placed the order for that wing uh, a full year ago uh, at this point, so back in the summer of last year. My expectation at the time was that it would take about six or seven months to get here and that I'd be ready for it. Uh, if it got here around the start of the year, I'd be finished with the empennage by then. So it took about three months longer for the wing to get here than I was expecting. But on the bright side, if you can put it that way, I'm so far behind on the empennage that I'm still not ready for the wing yet uh, and won't be for some time. So I took a lot of footage of unpacking the crates and inspecting all the parts and everything of the uh, when the wing got here. With Didn't really have any intention of posting any of that, but kind of changed my mind. I figured I'd put it together and get it out there, and that way if anybody is interested in seeing what it's like to unpack an RV-10 wing kit, well, it won't be the most exciting video in the world, but here you go. So the wing kit comes in two crates. There's this a uh, big flat one here that the U-Haul truck is giving birth to into my garage right now. And uh, then there's a long skinny one that's about 15, a little over 15 feet long that you can still see the end of in the truck there. And that's got the main wing spars and a lot of the other, you know, the other long parts, the other spars and some push rods and whatnot in it. And I chose to rent a U-Haul and just pick it up at the freight depot and bring it home. I did, it, I did a similar thing with the empennage kit. I rented a trailer and just brought it home. I just felt safer that way. You can have it delivered all the way to your door or at least to the street in front of your house. But I felt safer bringing it home myself. And, uh, you know, everything's worked out fine that way. So now that everything's safe in the garage and uh, the U-Haul's been returned, we're unpacking and moving everything down to the basement piece by piece. So... Uh, there you can see the rear spars. So now we're to the main spars, and these are obviously a very important part of the plane. So I kind of inspect everything and flip it over and make sure all the flanges look good and nothing's uh, dented or bent, and uh, also try to get a feel for the weight and uh, just how unwieldy they're going to be to try to carry them around. And they're not that bad. They're really not that heavy. They're not too heavy for one person to lift. But at the same time, I don't want to carry them down and around down the hill single-handedly uh, for fear that I might slip or something. Uh, so I get some help, and there we go. So the goal, once we get everything down to the basement and go through it and inventory it, is actually to pack it back uh, into the crates that it came in, at least loosely, uh, for storage while I finish the empennage. So that's why we end up taking all the crate material and a lot of the packing material down around as well. So here you can see I've moved on to the crate with the skins and ribs and most of the other hardware. So there's the big bundle bag of hardware, bolts and rivets and whatnot, and uh, assorted other parts. The pieces you can see uh, in sort of the foreground of the crate there that are you know still in the brown paper, those are the leading edge skins for the wings and you know, including the skins that make up the fuel tanks on the inboard sections of the wings. Those are tied down with string, which you can see I'm cutting there, and then when you cut them they spring up and there's a whole other set of parts underneath there. Uh, Vans really knows how to pack these things. They've been doing it for a few decades now, I guess, and they've really got it down pat. So once we get those leading edge skins out of the crate, there's still several layers of flat skins taped to a piece of cardboard in the bottom of the box. But at that point, the weight is down enough that we can just pick the whole thing up and move it, and we decide it's probably the safest way to move those flat skins just all in the, in the crate still. So that's what we end up doing. That's how we get the rest of it down to the basement. So speaking of, here we are down in the basement. I think it's the next day, and I'm just going through and unwrapping and unpacking everything well enough to inspect it and count it and inventory it. 
So my wife helps me. She sits there with the packing list, and I call out part numbers and descriptions and quantities, and she checks them off and writes down you know, how many we actually received. And you really do want to do that. You want to go through and count it all. Vance gives you 30 days to do all that and report back with any damage or discrepancies. And about the only thing they tell you you shouldn't count or that you don't have to count are the individual rivets in the bags. But everything else, every nut, every bolt, every screw, you want to count, check the quantity and the right sizes and everything uh, because it's a big parts list and there's bound to be a few discrepancies. So uh, that's what we go through and do here. So that probably sounds tedious, and I suppose it could be, but I sort of enjoy it. It's a little bit like Christmas, right? You're unwrapping things. It's airplane parts. What could be bad about that? Plus, I sort of like trying to identify things as I go. Uh, maybe that's another reason it's a little bit like presents. Uh, you unwrap a part. You read the part number. You can sort of tell what it is. I mean, obviously, a rib looks like a rib and a spar looks like a spar, but there's plenty of parts that... It's not entirely obvious uh, based on looking at the part, and certainly not from the part number itself, what that thing is. Uh, and I haven't had the plans of, for the wings to scrutinize up until this point, so, uh, and I haven't looked at them yet as I'm going through all this. So, you know, these are in-spar ribs, uh, no big surprise. But uh, there's some other parts later on that you look at and you go, well, what is this and, and why? Uh, so it's kind of fun to try to figure it out as you go. Uh, for example, obviously these are nose ribs, uh, but of course the inboard portion of the leading edge of the wing is actually fuel tank. And so uh, in a minute here you'll see that the uh, some of these nose ribs look a little different, and I think that's I think those are the ones for the fuel tank, I, I believe, uh, and the the lightning holes look a little different because they're baffles for the fuel. At least I think that's how it works. And so this is the rest of the fuel tanks. This is the part that seals the tanks off from the main spar and makes them sort of a self-contained unit that's mounted to the leading edge of the wing. And this looks like some leading edges for flaps and ailerons, I think. And one thing about vans and their packing, they have found the stickiest, thickest, most effective duct tape on the market and used it to uh, tape all these parts together. Because I spend a lot of time uh, just trying to peel that duct tape off. So here was a time where I think I learned a little something about the design, just unpacking the parts. If this bundle is what I think it is, this is the spar extension, which when I first read that description, I thought, what, really? But the more I thought about it, the RV-10 is a little bit bigger than uh, the other van's designs, and chances are they took a, a proven design of the spar and just extended it a little bit, and uh, hence the spar extension. So when it comes to parts like these, that I've unwrapped a big bundle of parts and unpacked them, I don't try to repack them all. I just put them nicely in a box and put it away for safekeeping. Now when it comes to these big bundles of uh, what looked like flap or aileron ribs, uh, it's kind of the opposite. I, um, if I can count them all and inspect the flanges and make sure everything looks uh, like it's undamaged, then I'll avoid unwrapping them all because, frankly, I think the chance of there being a damaged part uh, deep inside of a bundle of you know, 12 or 18 ribs is a lot less than the chance of you know, them getting knocked around if they were floating around loose in a box. So uh, as long as I can see the edges and count them, I'm, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going through the aileron 
uh, electric aileron trim kit. And this was an option that I went ahead and ordered when I ordered my wing. I think I could have waited until I was doing the fuselage, but I did go ahead and order it with the wing. And this was a case where I'm not sure if I got all the right parts. So it's a third-party kit, comes in a box, uh, but then there's some other parts that mount it to the push rod of an RV-10 aileron. And that's where the what was in the packing list seemed to differ a little bit from what was in the box, which seemed to differ a little bit. Uh, well, the plans that came in the box, which is what I'm looking at now, matched what was in the box. But I didn't feel like that really fit the description exactly of what was in the packing list. So in the end, I decided I wasn't going to be able to figure it out for sure, uh, you know, as I was just going through and inventorying. So I packed it all back up. I, I let Vans know that I wasn't certain about this. And I'm sure when I get around to actually building this, if there's a discrepancy, if there's something missing, you know, Vans will make it right. Moving on, uh, that looked like uh, fuel level sending units. All right, so moving on, I think on the table I see some reinforcements for around inspection plates and pieces of flat mounting brackets, uh, hinge, hinge brackets, I believe. That was a case where... Uh, I thought I had a discrepancy, but it turns out some parts are labeled with an X, and that's apparently for extra. Uh, Vans will sometimes just throw in an extra here and there. And then this looks like uh, some of the powder-coated parts that are, again, uh, pivot points or hinge uh, control horns for flaps or ailerons there. So moving on to some of the longer pieces um, that came in the spar crate. Uh, looks like some push rod tubing or maybe torque tube. Some more tubing and uh, probably aluminum angle. I know it's entirely possible that I've already got some fuselage parts because uh, I do remember reading in the documentation that came with this kit, there are some parts, uh, some fuselage parts that are long enough that they go ahead and send them in the long crate uh, with the spars because that keeps them from having to send another long crate when they send the fuselage kit. And speaking of spars, that's what these are. Um, I guess. Probably rear spars for the wings and uh, spars for aileron and flaps. And some trailing edge looked like. And so finally, the main spars. So I don't know if you can tell in the video, it doesn't show all that well, but they actually narrow down. There's a doubler that's already pre-attached and it steps down all the way out toward the tip and it's, uh, it's really pretty cool. So that's about it for the main components, at least the ones that I have video of. Um, so now just moving on to unpacking the big bag of hardware. So probably won't show a whole lot of this. Uh, this is already probably the least exciting video on YouTube. I can't imagine showing a headless guy counting screws is going to help matters. Uh, but it's something you definitely want to do. You know, I found a bag of rivets that was the wrong type of rivet. Um, they were 470s instead of 426s. And I had a bag of nut plates that was a couple short. And there's more than just, you know, rivets and screws and bolts in here. There's uh, bearings and you know, hinge bearings and electrical components and fuel fittings. So you definitely want to go through all this stuff and make sure you got what you were supposed to get. 
So I'll try to skip ahead to some of the highlights, if you can call it that. These are the bolts that hold the wings on. So these uh, eight big ones and eight small ones that bolt the spars to the carry-through structure through the fuselage. So they literally hold the wings on. And I guess I just couldn't resist actually showing me sorting and counting a bag of screws. <laughs> so, you know, all of this is relatively painless, uh, but there are a few bags that do get a little tedious, and probably this kind of thing is the best example. So everything in the hardware kit, almost everything is very well sorted into different bags. So, uh, you know, you can find everything identified easily. It's well labeled, but there are a few bags that have assorted slightly different sizes of uh, several different components all in the same bag. And this is kind of an example, these uh, bolts or screws, where you have the same type of screw and the, you know, the same size, but different lengths. Uh, and so you, you have to sort them and make sure that you got the right number of each of the various lengths. Not so bad with screws, right? But uh, probably the worst is a bag of, you know, probably about a hundred washers. I don't remember the exact number, but a, a lot of washers, all of them the same size and type with the exception of just a few that are slightly thinner than the rest. Uh, and so not only are you trying to sort through and count all these washers, you've got to find the, you know, 10 or 12 out of a hundred that look just like the others until you look at them edge on to determine that they're slightly thinner than the rest. So, you know, stuff like that can be a little frustrating. But again, all in all, uh, this is a relatively uh, satisfying and pain-free process. Um, you know, mostly like Christmas morning. So I'll let this play out. I'll leave it with a few stills uh, of everything. And to everyone who made it this far, thanks for watching.